Welcome to Business Innovators Radio, featuring industry influencers and trendsetters sharing proven strategies to help you build a better life right now. Hello, everybody. Today we're interviewing Bonnie Gaster. She's an associate broker and realtor with Berkshire Hathaway Home Services, Southeast Coastal Properties on Tybee Island, Georgia. She's been a top producer for 43 years and has been recognized as part of the Distinguished Sales Society and is extremely active in my Savannah Area Realtors Associations and within the Tybee community. She specializes in 1031 exchanges, foreclosures, investment properties, and vacation rental homes. Bonnie was 2005 Realtor of the Year and the recipient of the 2010 Counter Award by the Seven Board of Realtors. Welcome, Bonnie. Thank you so much for being here today. It's a pleasure. Awesome. Uh, Bonnie, before we jump in, can you tell us a bit more about yourself? Well, I grew up on this very small island uh, right outside of Savannah, so I've had a, a very comfortable growing up in a small place and have uh, become part of the bigger community. I uh, have been active in the real estate business for 43 years. And um, having grown up in a small town, it's it's really wonderful when I get to go and, and do things like at the Georgia Association or the National Association of Realtors. So I've, I've been able to expand my territory. Good. You said that you've been uh, active in real estate for 43 years. So I assume this is something you always wanted to do or did you just stumble into it at the time? I almost stumbled into it. I was a uh, sales manager of um, the Hilton Hotel here, and a friend of mine who was a realtor uh, approached me and asked me if I would consider getting licensed and working for her company. So that's what I did. Okay, that's cool. Um, now let's talk about your attributes or traits or qualities that you think contributed the most to your success, and how do you think you developed these around the years? Well, the the one thing that I've always had the natural ability to do is um, connect with people and feel what they want because I can show the same house to 20 different people and 20 different reactions will happen. So uh, I, enjoy, I enjoy my work. Um, if I didn't, I would not be doing it this long. But um, having to uh, understand construction which uh, I do understand construction. I understand uh, what it takes to make a property marketable. And um, I'm very, very fortunate to be able to put the right person in the right place. Um, My motto has always been, I will never put someone into something I cannot get them out of. Uh, People always think that this may be their final destination. They're going to retire at the beach and then... The grandbabies start coming in Chicago, and they turn around and go back. So I've got to be able to get them out of what they purchased and not have them uh, suffer. So it's it's fun. Good. Well, that's a good example because I was about to ask, you know, give me an example of how this helped you. But I think that was a good one, being able to help people get out of something that they got themselves into. So I think that's great. Um, Was there anything else, any other examples you might have about how these traits helped you? Well, the the main thing that um, my first broker told me um, was, if you're going to work for me, you're going to be involved with the Realtor Association. You're going to be involved with the Board of Realtors. Um, And that has been a strong point because of not only our education, but our camaraderie, uh, the ability to... uh, just happen to be in a meeting and say, hey, I've got a brand new listing. I'll tell you about it. And they bring me a contract the next day. So it's uh, the ability to stay involved. I've been an officer of the board, a past president of the Savannah Area Realtors for 2015. And uh, I'm involved in the state and national associations. So keeping yourself in tune with what's going on in the market and also what's going on legally and in the profession uh, just keeps you on your toes. Good. Now, like a lot of things in life, there's no straight line to success, right? I mean, there's ups and downs. What are some of the major adversities or trials you had to overcome to achieve your goals? Well, when the the first quote-unquote recession came um, when the in the 70s, 
we didn't know it was a recession. We just kept working and kept achieving and doing what we had to do. Uh, we didn't have the Internet and television telling us how bad it was back then. Uh, we just kept on working. And I think that's the, the key to it is love what you do and work hard at it, and the obstacles will come. Uh, mortgage rates, uh, I mean, I was selling property when we had 20% interest rates uh, in the late 70s. It was, it was not pretty, but we survived it, and I'm still here with my feet on the right side of the dirt. <laughs> I like that. And also, just maybe to elaborate on this, what keeps you going whenever you face these huge obstacles? Is there are specific tricks that you have to really be able to push forward? Um, I, part of it is the challenge. Um, I, I don't like losing. So you just you just keep on you just keep on working at it, and and you get slapped you get slapped in the face a time or two, but that hopefully gives you the incentive to bounce back and do it one more time. Mm -hmm. Awesome advice. Um, looking forward, uh, what do you think your vision is for your business? Let's say in the next five years. Um, I intend to continue. Uh, as long as I am able to. Uh, physically, I think I'll be able to put up with this for another 10, 12 years. Mentally, I hope I will be able to keep up longer than that. <laughs> and how do you feel like you're going to market yourself? Is there anything specific you plan to do or just keep the state of course? Uh, staying the course is probably the best thing. Uh, what we're having to do is become more and more um, into the Internet world. Um, I did not realize how important that would be 20 years ago, but I know how important it is now. And as far as your, your um, the, the younger generation in our business, they, they want instant gratification. And so they're always on that phone, they're texting, they're doing whatever, but we still make it happen regardless of if I'm the, the old girl in the court or one of the young ones. We, um, we've got a, a good business, and as long as you keep your um, ethics high and you work hard, you will succeed. Awesome. Now let's talk about the misconceptions people have out there about working with a realtor. What do you think the biggest one is? Um, it's always commission. It's, it's always commission. And, and they, uh, many people say, oh, I just don't want to pay someone to sell my property. Well, the, what they may not realize is the education that we've gone through, the expenses that we have on a day to day basis, uh, in order to sell property. Uh, the market conditions, uh, when they are high and when the market is improving, Hey, it's it's a piece of cake. When the market is declining, uh, you're having to work twice as hard to please your sellers because they're concerned that their property is not selling uh, as fast as they want it to. Okay, good one. Um, hypothetically, let's say a family member that live on the other side of the country was thinking about selling their homes. What type of advice would you give them? on selling their home, what should they do? What should they look for? Well, first of all, I would tell them to, I would refer them to a realtor uh, in my network and someone that I could communicate with and make sure that that they're being handled properly. Um, finding an agent in California, uh, and in fact, I'm selling a property on Tabby Island for an agent in California right now. Okay. So, uh, the connectivity is there, but um, I would find the advice I would give. If I knew the property, I would say, okay, you need to spruce up your kitchen. You need to clean out your, your clutter or, or whatever would be just general advice. But I would turn them over to a competent person that would communicate with me and let me know the progress that he or she is making with my referral. Good one. Now to wrap up, what one piece of advice would you give our listeners that are interested in entering this business? Um, I would tell someone if they're getting in this business to not be disappointed 
the first 90 days if you don't sell anything. Uh, I would tell them to be patient and educate yourself in every way you can. Uh, attend the classes. Become become aware of your community. Uh, know what's happening in your community, so that when you do have a customer, that you can advise them. Uh, you know what they're getting into in the community, and um, just just know know your market. I mean, that's the bottom line. Know your market. Work hard. And uh, be involved. Well, knowledge is power, right? Oh, you got it. <laughs> that was awesome, Bonnie. Thank you so much. Now, how can our listeners learn more or get in touch with you? Uh, I'm very easy to find. Um, my website is tidyrealestate.com. Um, my email is tybebonnie, T-Y-B-E-E-B-O-N-N-I-E, at msn.com. Um, I have a full-time licensed assistant that is here um, Monday through Friday, so her name is Kelly. If I'm not available, she knows how to track me down. And the home number, 912-786-5759, is the best contact because if I'm in the car and the phone rings and I have a customer, I will not answer it. Uh, my customers come first. So, so always try the house number, and you'll find one of us. Awesome. Well, once again, Bonnie, thank you very, very much for taking the time to uh, doing this with us today. This is very enlightening. So, once again, a huge thank you, and I wish you an amazing day. Thank you. Same to you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks for listening to Business Innovators Radio. To hear all episodes featuring leading industry influencers and trendsetters, visit us online at businessinnovatorsradio.com today.